Hi, I'm Dr. David Wang, working with RPI, and this is a quick tip on the medial and lateral retinacula of the knee. So anatomically speaking, you've got your patella here, and uh, hopefully everybody knows that patellar tendon or patellar ligament right in the midline. And the patella retinacula, actually the main fibers traverse longitudinally parallel to the patellar tendon on both the lateral and medial sides. A lot of people will imagine that the, that the retinacula go transverse and there may be a few fibers that roll transverse like that, but mostly they're longitudinal. Uh, whereas the medial and lateral patellofemoral ligaments, on the other hand, do go more in the transverse directions. So under ultrasound, here in the middle, we have our patellar tendon and in this view, uh, proximal or superior is to the right, distal or inferior is to the left. This is the inferior patellar pole. You can see the patellar tendon coming downward onto the tibial tuberosity here. So if I'm going to visualize the lateral retinaculum, you can see that my hand is going to start sliding laterally. And what happens is the tibial tuberosity disappears and also the patellar tendon is going to disappear and instead you're gonna get this, this kind of um, like a wispy looking hyperechoic structure that has more or less a linear appearance to it, but it has a little bit more laxity to it. This is the lateral patellar retinaculum. Many times in symptomatic individuals, as you can see in our subject here, they will have some cortical irregularity and the usual hypoechoic signal here indicating potential strain of that lateral patellar retinaculum. Now where this attaches is actually on the medial aspect of Gertie's tubercle. So if I continue to go laterally, then you're going to see the IT band, the iliotibial band, which is this thicker structure right here. So this is iliotibial band coming down on Gertie's tubercle. So then going in reverse from lateral to medial, you have iliotibial band of Gertie's tubercle, then I'm gonna slide medially, the wispy lateral retinaculum, then I continue medially still and back onto the patellar retinaculum. Now we're gonna go in the opposite direction so I'm moving medially, sweeping through the patellar tendon. Now the patellar tendon is disappearing, and then here we've got this wispy thing again, and this wispy hyperechoic band is the medial patellar retinaculum. Likewise, attaching on sort of this medial aspect of the anterior tibia next to the tibial uh, tubercle, or tuberosity, again, you can have cortical irregularity and hypoechoic signaling here in people that may be symptomatic. And if I continue to roll medially, now we get the medial meniscus and MCL. So here you've got MCL, then moving um, laterally again, medial patellar retinaculum, then moving more laterally still back onto the patellar tendon right here. So that's what the ultrasound imaging looks like from a symptom standpoint. Uh, folks that have this sort of infral uh, patellar, either medial or lateral pain and tenderness, and you will have focal tenderness when you push, for example, along that medial Gertie's tubercle for the lateral, or on the medial aspect of the anterior tibia for the medial uh, retinaculum. They will have focal tenderness there, and note that that reproduces their pain. So you don't mistake it for patellar tendinosis. Don't mistake it for a fat pad impingement. It's a separate diagnosis uh, with separate imaging uh, appearance on ultrasound. Thank you.